Welcome, everyone. I'm Paul Lefevre, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. And my topic this time is iOS toolbars. So toolbars. Well, you can see here, this is an example of the calendar app. It's the actual calendar app on an iPhone. And there can be toolbars at different parts of your app. So the navigation bar can have a toolbar. And that means you're going to have to make the navigation bar visible. That is optional on your views. You can uh, not have a navigation bar and use more of the screen space. So if you have the navigation bar visible, you can have a toolbar at the top. And the toolbar, as you can see, there is the tippy top part. And you can actually have toolbar buttons on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Here in this calendar app, there's only buttons on the right-hand side. Uh, the left-hand side just has a back, back button. And there's also the general purpose toolbar, which appears at the bottom. And you can put whatever you want for buttons down there. And when you're designing your toolbars in Zojo, all you have to do is drag around a tool button from the library and position it on one of these areas on the view. So if you drag it to the top part of the view with the navigation bar turned on, you can put buttons on the left side or the right side. And if you drag it to the bottom, uh, the button will appear there and a, a toolbar will show up. So toolbars can have a variety of button styles and there's several that are built in. You can choose uh, from the selection. We'll look at it in a minute when we get to the demo. Uh, there's a few that are just actually text buttons. They're just going to have uh, words in them. But the reason you'd want to choose those over just creating your own button and typing the text in is because these will be automatically localized by iOS. So you won't have to worry about that. Uh, you see there'll be things like edit and stuff like that. There are also buttons that can be icons. Take up a little bit less space than words which is nice. And there are, of course, the special buttons that are actually spaces, and you can just have a regular space to just, you know, kind of put gaps between buttons, or you can have a flexible space, which allows you to have buttons that are essentially right justified. And of course, you can create your own button text or your own icon, but you can't have both. And iOS button, either has text or it has an icon and uh, the icon always wins. So if you specify an icon, that's what's going to show up. So for icons, much like with desktop and web projects, you're going to add your icons using image sets and definitely are going to want to provide a 2x size. It's always good to fill in as many of the sizes as you can, 1x, 2x, 3x. And an important thing to note with uh, iOS icons is uh, multicolor icons just aren't a thing. So uh, essentially the icon just uses the, the tint color, uh, which typically is just black. Um, so you'll see icons that often look just like this. They're just, you know, kind of flat, single color. That's a common style for iOS icons. And then when you've uh, added your icon to an image set, you know, you've given it a name, you can just choose that name when you're creating the tool button and uh, for the icon, and that will be what appears. And I'll point out a, a few icon sources that might be a good place for you to grab some stuff. Fat Cow has a lot of icons. They're kind of small, probably not super great for, you know, real iOS apps that you're going to try and ship in the app store. Uh, they're also colorful, so that doesn't really bring you a lot. But there is a bunch there. They might be great for prototyping or at least placeholders. Open Iconic has a bunch of icons you might want to check out. And then Icons 8 is also another good source. They have uh, quite a few that are available for free. And of course, you can sign up with a subscription with them and get access to uh, more icons than you can count, it looked like. In addition to designing your toolbar, by you know, drag and drop using the layout editor. You can also, oh, I, I'm skipping ahead. 
uh, I want to point out before we get into that part, uh, the button presses, uh, you know, people are going to actually tap on buttons on your various toolbars and how are those handled? So actually on the view itself, there is an event, the toolbar pressed event and all button presses for toolbar buttons go through this event. So regardless if they're toolbar buttons on the navigation bar in the left or the right, or on the actual toolbar on the bottom, they all go into this event where you can check which button was pressed and then route your code accordingly. All right, so dynamic toolbar buttons. As I was saying, in addition to just designing your toolbar using the layout editor by dragging and dropping the buttons around, you can also add or remove buttons at runtime. And there are a variety of toolbar methods that are available to do that. Uh, there's, you know, here you can see there's add, insert, there's remove, and you can remove them a variety of ways. You can get a count of the buttons on there. So all useful things for you to do, you know, programmatic control of your toolbar. And there are also uh, several shared methods available for uh, on the tool button class that gives you different types of buttons. So you use this to create an actual button that you can then stick onto the toolbar. All right, so let's switch over to Zojo and look at some examples. So first we'll just uh, bring up an empty project and show you how kind of the drag and drop and stuff works. All right, so here I have a, a layout. I'm gonna wanna turn the navigation bar on so that it's visible. And this icon here is the tool button which you can just drag to the various parts of the screen. So if you want it on the left-hand side, you can put it there. If you want one on the right-hand side, you can put one there. And if you want one on the bottom, you can just drag them to the bottom. You don't gotta be too precise. You just gotta get in the general area and it'll kinda stick it where it needs to be for you. So here I've got some navigation uh, toolbar buttons and some toolbar buttons. And if you look at the inspector, you can see the various properties for these things. So the caption, you know, if you wanted to just type your own caption, you can do that. You can also come here to the type dropdown and you can pick from a uh, built-in system type thing. So you can see, say you take pick done, it automatically set the text here to done and it's a little more bold indicating that it has a you know special purpose type button. And the caption here is not used. So that means this is one of the ones that will just pull localized text from iOS. So if you actually want a button that serves this purpose, pulling it from here makes more sense than using a plain style and typing your own word done there. There are other styles that have uh, Oh, nope, that's not one that have icons. Yeah, add has an icon. So add has a, you know, a giant plus button that shows up. Trash is an icon. You can also do the spacing. So I could set this middle one to be a flexible space and then put something else here on the side. like that. So you can have your buttons set up like that. You can also have, uh, of course, your own icon. So if I want to uh, do my own icon, I can drag in a couple here, set them up in the image set. And then I can choose the icon right from there. I do have to change the type back though, I believe to plain style. If you pick a system type, that's gonna override the caption and the image. And you can see it's using the image that I pulled in. 
that's really all you have to do for, for laying out the stuff. It's pretty easy. Just kind of drag and drop things where you want. I'm going to switch here to this pre-built example. And same sort of thing here. It's got some buttons, a flexible space, some stuff on the bottom here. But I want to just show the minor amount of code that is here in the toolbar pressed event. And what you're typically going to end up doing is have some sort of select case on the, the button parameter. And then you can check which button was the one that was tapped and then do what you need to do. So in this particular case, all it does is updating this label in the middle as each button is tapped by me. So you can see that the taps are registered. And you know, you can do what you want. These could open new screens, perform new actions, whatever makes sense. And of course, you can see is in the navigator, you can see the various buttons. And it is always a good idea to give your buttons as with anything else, you know, nice names. That makes the code in the toolbar pressed event easier to read and it makes it easier to spot things when you're looking over the navigator. As you can see here, I didn't do that on this one. And that's the flexible space. Uh, probably in this case, because I'm not really referring to that in code anywhere, so I didn't really care. But if I did want to say dynamically, you know, remove that or something, giving it a good name might be a good idea. All right, so let me switch to the dynamic project. So this project here has no toolbar buttons that are part of the layout. It does have three buttons on here. These are just regular buttons, they're not tool buttons. And there's code in each of these that will add buttons. So let's run this first so we can see what it does. So the first button I'll tap here, and you can see it immediately added several toolbar buttons, you know, one to the left side of the navigation bar, one to the right, and then one here at the bottom. I can tap on them and they call the toolbar pressed event where I have some code to just display which one you tapped. You can disable a button here and then I can no longer tap on it. And you can, of course, remove a button if you really don't want it. And then in this case, that was the last button on the toolbar, so the whole toolbar slides away. So what does that code look like here? So the add code here in the action event handler. Uh, the important thing to call here is the shared method. So on the iOS tool button, I am particularly pulling a system. I'm using a system button. So I'm calling the new system item shared method. And I'm passing in using the enumeration, the name of the system item I want. So in this case, system add. All the ones that are available in the dropdown when you're adding a button in the designer is also available in this enumeration. And that's how you can add things. So you create your button like so, and then you just use the add method to add it to the toolbar you want. So in this case, I've added it to the left navigation toolbar. And the same thing here adds another button to the right navigation toolbar. And these two are using icons from my project. So they're just plain and they're referring to the icons that I have here. And they just, this adds it to the right and this adds it to the main view toolbar, which appears at the bottom. So pretty simple code there. The, uh, the disable button is just checking the property. I created a property for each of the buttons and if it actually isn't nil, it's just gonna set it to be disabled by setting the enabled property to false. 
And then removing is also pretty simple. Uh, there's actually a remove by value method on the toolbar and you can just pass in the name of the button and it'll find that button on the toolbar and get rid of it. There's a few other remove options as well, depending on what you want to remove. But uh, this is nice and clean. You don't have to even iterate through all the buttons on the toolbar. If you get a reference to it, just pass it in and it'll get removed from the toolbar. So you get a lot of power here for a dynamic creation of your toolbar, pretty much do whatever it is you want. All right, let's switch back. No, I want that one. All right, so I want to remind everyone, zojo.com slash download is where you get the latest and greatest version of Zojo, which the current version is 2018 release two, which came out in early August. And that's the version that's available for download now. So you can always grab the latest version there and play with it for free, even if your license has expired. And should you like what you see, you know, renew your license and you can use the new version. We have a free book for those new to Zojo at zojo.com slash learn. And it does have a little addendum regarding iOS development. So you can check that out. Our user form is a great place to ask questions, search for answers, or just hang out. Definitely be checking that out. And at the Zojo Dev Center, home of all the documentation, there's also a page in the user guide on iOS toolbars where you can review this material and read a bit more about it. I can always be reached via email, paul at zojo.com, and on Twitter. Twitter is a fun place most of the time, so you can always at me there if you like. All right, well, I think that wraps things up. I want to thank everyone for attending. Have a great day.